Hi and welcome to 5 Elements Recaps. School student Eiko Takabana is confined to a wheelchair after an accident that also killed the rest of her family. After encountering a new transfer student, Yua Kanzaki, she is mysteriously able to walk again. Kanzaki takes her to visit her family home for the first time since the accident where they are pursued by CAAC. Agents and escape to the old town. Eiko and Kanzaki are met there by a group of people who reveal that her body is a fake. Suzumu Kuro says that Eiko's brain was transplanted into an artificial body, while an artificial brain was transplanted into her physical body. Kanzaki reveals that Eiko's mother and brother are still alive in an prohibited area called Primary Point. This is where two years ago an abnormal artificial organic life form called the Burst was created at the Kuryu Research Facility during her operation. Now called the Malignant Matter, it has flowed downriver, forcing humanity to retreat towards the Sea of Japan. Kanzaki shows her images what happened during the burst and Eiko is finally convinced of her situation. As the group plan an expedition into Primary Point, their headquarters are attacked by the CAAC. Nanami Azanami of the CAAC detains Eiko and Kanzaki. However, the divers manage to break them out and prepare for an expedition to Primary Point. Kanzaki fits a mind scanner to Eiko and she experiences the burst and sees her mother and brother's capture by the matter. Meanwhile, the matter becomes active again in the CAAC launches a barrage of tranquilizer missiles against the AICO to subdue it. The divers proceed with their plan which involves splitting into two groups. The team don live suits that both protects them and enhances their strength. They are unaware, however, of the link between Eiko and her duplicate and of bioactive substances she produces that can attract the matter. The group clears the gate just as the government orders an evacuation of the area. Shortly after entering Area 1, the divers come under attack from malignant matter but manage to stop it. Kanzaki distributes vile cartridges containing a drug to inhibit matter activity. Eiko recognizes it as the drug that she has previously been injected with at Kuryu Hospital at CAAC. Headquarters, they propose to completely destroy the matter but Akiko argues that it gives Japan a technological advantage. As the divers advance in Area 1, the matter creates human-like beings, but they are easily destroyed. The team split up and reach the guillotine shutter at K1, which they activate, electrifying the matter and providing a reprieve. Back in the city, the CAAC detects that the guillotine shutter was activated. The divers team enter the abandoned Yanagawara camp, where they rest and resupply. Eiko joins Mines Kazuki on guard duty, wanting to explore the area. In town, Kuros meets Nambara, interested to know why she has moved to town from the capital and to find out about CAAC's intentions, but she reveals little information. Back at Yanagawara camp, Eiko drops a clear sphere which was a present from her father. It appears to be a sample organism that Holo Havilies gave to customers and it turns into a creature and escapes from the camp. Eiko goes outside to find it, causing alarm among the team, however Kanzaki finds it and returns it to her and she names it Gummy. It is revealed that only Maho Shureishi and Kanzaki know about Eiko's effect on the matter. Meanwhile, CAAC. Operatives enter Area 1. As the divers team proceeds, Keat engages in reckless behavior while attacking the matter which causes damage to their beetle vehicle and delays the group's progress to point K2. Kanzaki fits Eiko with a helmet system to establish dream contact with her body at primary point. In town, Nanbara discusses with Izazu the need to recover Eiko as the prime example of their advances in artificial organisms. Eiko access her memories, but she seems to see events that are not part of her own memories. The divers team advance towards point K2, which they must reach before sunrise to enter Area 3, however they run into malignant matter which resists their weapons. Kazuki manages to obtain a sample which Kanzaki uses to modify their weapons making them more effective, while Eiko seems to be able to predict the direction of its attacks and helps the team to direct their fire. Back in town, Asazu tells Kuros that he has been dismissed for his use of funds from Dr. Kuryu's research budget. On the move again in Area 2, the divers team are confronted by CAAC, Special Forces. The CAAC, Special Forces squad demand that the divers hand over Eiko but Kanzaki refuses. Suddenly matter attacks the special forces squad and Haruka realizes that it is attracted to light. She distracts it by firing flares in the opposite direction and they follow its retreat. Eiko feels guilty about the risk to the divers if they proceed further because her body is not human which is accidentally overheard by Haruka. In Kuryu Hospital Kuros has data deleted from the server and discovers that the brainwaves of Yuzua, the unconscious daughter of Kaiwa's Kasazu, are active at the same time as matter activity. Meanwhile Asazu tells the hospitalized Professor Kuryu inventor of the cell assembler which was later developed by Yura, that he will continue the research to save his daughter. As the divers team continues, they are attacked by matter which manages to enter the beetle and capture Eiko sealing her within a liquid-filled pot. 
However, she finds a weapon and uses it to crystallize the matter. They recover her unconscious body which is covered in carbon nanostructures. Haruka confirms that she is a composite and Daisuke realizes they have been carrying matter bait with them. The divers confront Eiko and Kanzaki over the information that they withheld, but eventually agree to continue with the mission. Meanwhile, Professor Kuryu dies and Isazu becomes the lab director. Kuros tells Nambara what he found about Yuzuya's connection to the matter, assuming that Isazu also knows. The divers continue with their mission, however, each time they crystallize the matter, Eiko suffers intense pain and the carbon nanostructures reappear on her body. Kuros updates Kanzaki about Yuzuya and Isazu learns about Unit 1. As the divers continue to K4, the matter attacks become more frequent, persistent and more humanoid in shape. They fight on, and Daisuke is mortally wounded, but they manage to reach K4 and activate the guillotine, temporarily stopping the matter. Isazu continues his research and deduces that when Dr. Yura died, Kuros used the body of Unit 1 to preserve his consciousness as Yua Kanzaki. Eiko confronts Kanzaki about what will happen to the other Eiko when they reach primary point, but they are interrupted by another matter attack. The team presses on, within sight of K5 and primary point, the Kuryu Biotech Research Facility 2. They are attacked by a large humanoid form of matter which captures Eiko, Kanzaki and Maho. Eiko sees visions of the burst, but then the matter releases them safely and they enter the facility. Isazu manages to patch in a video feed from Kuryu Hospital to Primary Point and confronts Kanzaki whom he addresses as Tashihide Yura. Haruka confirms that Kanzaki is Unit 1 and Isazu reveals that, to end the burst, the duplicate Eiko must be destroyed. Also that the original Eiko Takabana caused the burst during the operation to create the duplicate Eiko. Main character Eiko is the artificial brain in the original body, the duplicate, and Kanzaki intends to induce programmed cell death in her brain before returning it to the artificial body in order to kill it and thus end the burst. The duplicate Eiko runs away in confusion, but is enveloped by the matter where she meets the original Eiko. As the two Eikos speak to each other inside the malignant matter, the rest of the team try to reach a bunker in the basement before the government JSDF launches an all-out attack on the malignant area trying to find Eiko. Humanoid matter engulfs Kanzaki where he becomes Yura and talks to Yuzua who pleads with him to rescue her from her situation. The original Eiko tells her duplicate about the burst accident and her transformation into the matter and thanks her duplicate as experiencing the memories of the life her duplicate lived kept her sane and conscious allowing her to keep limited control over the matter. She then promises to try to suppress the matter and duplicate Eiko is released from the matter. She manages to find Eiko's mother and brother and promises to rescue them, while original Eiko frees Kanzaki. While Eiko tells Kanzaki about the original Eiko's plan to sacrifice herself, Isazu establishes a link to and takes control of Yuzua's humanoid matter so he can interrogate Kanzaki, Yura and analyze Eiko's brain to save his daughter. Kanzaki explains how is Yura. He accelerated the duplicate Eiko's brain development using dream contact to channel the original Eiko's memories to create a fully formed duplicate brain. Kazuki suddenly arrives and frees Eiko and Kanzaki from the matter and they head for the basement shelter while the JSDF prepares to incinerate the entire area despite Nanbara's objections. They reach a storm where Kazuki awkwardly declares his love for Eiko and promises to save her, but she says he loves the wrong person. Meanwhile, Nanbara sends in a team of divers to collect matter samples and stall the JSDF action. Kanzaki sends a message to Kuros to sever the link between the unconscious Yuzua and the many duplicates of her body which were created within the matter. Meanwhile, Kanzaki, Eiko and Kazuki reach ALSUS, the multi-purpose surgical installation where the original operation took place two years earlier. Eiko prepares to sacrifice herself to destroy the burst. But Kanzaki has a change of heart, accepting that she is the real Eiko, too, and swears to save her. As Kanzaki inserts Eiko into the matter for the brain transfer, Isazu activates all of the Yuzuha duplicates to attack her. The divers fight to protect Eiko during the brain transfer surgery, but it is a losing battle until they fire an anti-cell assembler capsule onto the matter. While back at Kuryu Hospital, Kuro severs the link between Yuzuha and her duplicates. This has the effect of shutting down Asazu in the matter, returning Yuzuha to consciousness. Kanzaki completes the brain transfer, and the original Eiko emerges from the matter, greeting the divers for the first time. The duplicate Eiko, still trapped inside, frees Eiko's mother and brother. As the matter slowly crystallizes, a creature crawls out, transforms and finally a regenerated Eiko emerges. Kanzaki assumes that Gummy who was trapped inside the matter with her had a copy of Eiko's body data. The two Eikos embrace, then the duplicate Eiko goes to greet her family, before swapping places with the original Eiko. Life returns to normal for the original Eiko, while the duplicate leaves to live her own life and create her own name and memories. This was today's video. If you enjoy it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new.